Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to follow a powder bag through the loading process. Loading actually starts at the beginning of the cruise. Once you leave port, you can take on ammunition. Or, while you're underway, ammunition can be resupplied to you from uh, other supply ships. The powder bags come in aluminum cans like this. Each can weighs about 20 pounds on its own and 350 pounds total. It comes with three 110 pound powder bags in it. The aluminum cans allow the silk bags to be transported safely onto the ship and as you're moving it around the ship. The ship is outfitted with a series of these hand trucks that allow a single sailor to be able to roll this 350 pound object around the ship. You can see that the shells have a similar but different uh, hand truck for moving them around. Typically shells and powder are loaded together because you would carry approximately the same amount of powder as it takes to fire the number of shells that you have on board. An Iowa-class battleship can carry just under 1,200 shells, about 130 per barrel, and so there would be roughly six powder bags per shell, or two of these cans. So there's about 2,400 of these cans loaded on board when we're fully outfitted, and about 7,200 110 pound powder bags. Once you have the bags on board, they're brought to a hatch like this one. Turret one only has two of these hatches because of how narrow the ship is, but turrets two and three each have four. Some of the hatches are for shells, some of the hatches are for powder. When you open this up, you would rotate the turret a little bit, and on top of each turret is a crane that folds out over the side. The crane is just a mounting point for a wire. Come on in here. So this wire could be run from this electric hoist up to the gun turret and then down the hatch with the powder. There's a special like grab it claw type thing that attaches to the powder canisters and the shells for lowering them down those hoists. That attaches to the end of the wire here. Each hoist has a control box like this one with up and down switches on it. Now we're at the bottom of one of the passing scuttles. So as the powder is loaded, it comes all the way down here on the outside of the barbette. You notice the uh, round wall here. Once we're on the outside of the barbette, then we can pass it to the inside part of the turret for loading it. And I'll show you how that works in a second. One thing to point out here, it's the deck at the bottom of this, not flat anymore. There are some nice dents and divots. Once you get down here, there is a yellow track in the overhead, just like you see on Broadway. This allows you to sling the powder canisters or shells, depending on what magazine you're in, onto that track to slide it around to where it's going. Once you get it to the door, the track usually ends, but you'll notice there are some big reinforced pinholes here. The cart looking thing without wheels pins into those pinholes, which gives you a ramp to slide the powder on to get them into the magazine. You'll also notice that directly inside of the door is a big flat metal plate, usually about a half inch thick, that's all dinged up. That's the strike plate where oftentimes this stuff is dropped as it's being passed through. So now we're in one of the magazines, the powder cans would be stacked up here, floor to ceiling, and these spaces are climate controlled. You can see the chilled water radiator in the overhead. So the powder is now loaded. The next time we're gonna move it is when we're say going into a port where we cannot have all of these explosives on board. We will offload it onto a supply ship or uh, like the two mile long pier at Bayonne um, off of the ship before we go into say New York Harbor, Philadelphia, somewhere like that where you wouldn't want a huge explosion in the middle of a population center. Or we offload it the fun way. To do that, you take one of these cast aluminum knobs. We've done a video about this in the past, but 
this just slots onto the door of the powder can and you can turn it and that unlocks the door so you can reach in and get the powder out. In order to get more sailors pulling powder out, the magazines are two stories tall. Check out the upper magazine and then come back here. Many of the magazines have the powder all in one space, but up here around turret one, they, we have the uh, side of the ship here, so there's a lot less room. And so we get these multi-compartment powder magazines. And this features a passing scuttle. So the powder would be stacked in its aluminum canisters here, from the aft end all the way forward here. A sailor could pull the bags out of the canisters here, and they're bringing it over to this brass tray. Once it's sitting here, when the scuttle is open to pass powder, I can just shove that manually and the powder will slide along the brass. Here's the other side of the scuttle and part of the rail that if this was open would be bolted in to span this gap. There's also additional powder storage in here, but it's a significantly smaller space. There's not enough powder for the whole gun. Slides all the way along this brass tray here. There's another spanner piece here that can be locked up in place when this is in use or has to be broken down when the watertight lid is closed over it, water and flash tight. So the powder rolls over here and it sits on this hoist. You'll notice from up here, we've got nowhere to pass the powder into the barbette. See the round wall there is the barbette. On that side of the barbette is the shell deck. We actually need to send this down one level to the powder flats. Many of the powder magazines on Battleship New Jersey are actually two stories tall, with this one just feeding more ammo into the magazine below us. When the bag is on here, I can step on this foot pedal on the deck, and that will unlock the gravity hoist. This just has a counterweight on it, so when there's a 110-pound powder bag sitting on it, It will push all the way down to the bottom of the hoist. And then when that powder bag is removed by the crew down there, it shoots back up here so that I can throw the next powder bag on it, step on the lever again, and then down it goes. Here is the lower end of the gravity hoist. Sailors take the powder off of this before the hoist goes back up. And this back part is the counterweight. So you'll notice we've got two rails in here. One rail has sailors putting stuff on it from the gravity hoist and what they grab from that side of the room. One rail has sailors grabbing stuff from this side of the room. Theoretically, an Iowa-class battleship can fire one round every 30 seconds for periods of time. Probably not long periods of time because you're manually pulling these 110 pound bags out. So having a group of sailors on another level passing stuff down helps us get more manpower opening up these powder cans and unloading powder quickly. Because the powder is stacked floor to ceiling, there are some incredibly janky stools like this one. I've stood on it in another video. I'm not gonna risk my life again, but that folds open and you stand on it and that's how you reach the powder at the top. Remember these are three bags deep, so you might have to reach powder on the inside. You've got a brass hook like this that you can then stick in, reach on the slot and pull the powder out so that you can actually grab the whole bag. All of the implements in this space are either brass or aluminum because those non-ferrous metals do not spark. So you've pulled your powder out of one of the open cases like this one, put it on the rail and you slide it all the way forward down the rail. At this point, your job is nearly done. You've got a passing scuttle like this. If I pull this open, the counterweighted scuttle comes down and closes. You can see the rails here push it into a watertight position. Over here, you can see the counterweight. When I'm ready to go with powder, I can undog this and push it open. And it would probably stay like that throughout the entire engagement, assuming you're doing a lot of firings back and forth. Uh, then 
when you secure from January quarters, it closes again. Now I'm ready, but there is still an obstruction here. I can't pass the powder through. If I ring this bell, it lets a sailor on the other side know that I'm ready to go. He'll ring it back and rotate the door so that I can roll this powder into the door. Let me show you what that looks like. So, on the other side of this wall is the magazine. On the other side of this wall is the turret. There are two flash-proof roller doors between the magazine and the turret. This ensures that if there's a flash in one or the other, it's not gonna go through to the other space and set off additional powder charges. Oftentimes, underwater hits to nitrocellulose cordite magazines will cause them to start to explode, like they'll start to burn and smolder and flash, but in the time it, it takes them to actually explode, the hole that whatever projectile has caused this to start allows enough seawater in to flood that magazine and prevent it from exploding and destroying the entire ship. That doesn't count for an aerial hit, but for torpedoes or underwater shells, um, American nitrocellulose cordite usually will not cause an immediate explosion destroying the vessel. Uh, if a single magazine goes up, it is likely that will disable or destroy the vessel depending on the size of the magazine. But if you can limit that flash to just that space for long enough for that space to uh, flood itself, and you do have flood switches that you can throw if you've got time to, uh, then it's not going to go any further and you might still be able to use some of your other magazines and fire that gun. So these five proof doors gives us the most safety possible when dealing with something explosive like this. So the guy on the other side of this wall has just rung and told me that he's ready to fire. I am the only one with the handle. I open this and we're ready to go. I've got a tray here. This can fold down when not in use so we can walk around or fold up when in use. Now I roll this powder into the other one, but I don't have a handle here. So I've got to ring to them and let them know that the powder's ready to pass. So they have just rung and told me they're ready to go on this side. Same deal as before. I open this up and now I've got my powder bag. Remember this is in silk. So at some point during this passing process, this bag could have potentially ripped. If it is ripped and spilling out grains of powder, well then I've got this thing right here. This is an immersion tank that would normally be filled with salt water. I could throw the bag in there, which would render the powder inert. This bag has come through intact though, so I can actually move it to the elevator. The turrets rotate. You can see the separation on the deck between the rotating part and the non-rotating part, but the magazines and these roller doors do not rotate with it. So from here on out, I have to manually pick up the bag and carry it to whichever of the three hoists, right, left, or center, uh, that the bag needs to go in. I'm at the right hoist right now, and it has no bags in it. So it's a relatively easy trip to bring this in and set it up. Once I've got all six of my bags, or on occasion you use fewer bags, but once I've got all my powder bags here ready to go, you can see inside is the actual elevator. This elevator would lower just a little bit so that it's level with this hoist, and then it would tilt outward so that I could push all six of my bags onto the two levels of that elevator car. Come over here. And then a guy in here can pull the lever to tilt the elevator back and send a signal up telling the guy at the top that it is ready to go. The penultimate location for the powder is the powder hoist. Now I'm up in the turret at the main deck level of the ship. From up here, I can control the elevator that's bringing the powder up 
to the turret from down in the lower level of the ship. Here is a red handle that has a hoist and lower and neutral center position. I also have some buttons over here which are almost impossible for me to reach in this tight space. And a lever right down here between my legs. Notice that I've got a grab bar and this shield to keep me from going down in that pit as the ship is rocking in the water. Uh, and to keep this big elevator uh, of powder from you know, somehow tipping and coming back here. You can see the cable here that hoists and lowers the powder. I can also control this door. Now we're in the final position for the powder. This is the door I was telling you about on the other side. The shell would come up from right here, so that has it more or less in the uh, vertical position. This spanner tray breaks open like that and spans the distance between here and the breech of the gun. Now the shell is laying horizontal. The person sitting here hits the rammer as hard as possible to push that shell in so that the brass base ring engages the rifling. Once the shell is in, the spanning tray is empty and directly below this door. So this hatch comes open, the powder car elevator tilts forward. The first three bags are rolled into the tray by the gun crew. Two bags are pushed forward into the breech of the gun. One bag with the red patch on the breech filled with black powder that's gonna set off the entire explosion is moved to the back. At another signal, the elevator car goes up one more level, allowing the second row of three bags to be rolled onto the tray. Now all six bags are on the tray. The person sitting here now rams those bags in slowly. You don't want to push them in as hard as you just push the shell in, because then you end up compressing the powder, causing unnecessary friction with explosives and doing other things that generally uh, you don't want to do when you're messing with 660 pounds of nitrocellulose cordite. So once the gun captain who's giving hand signals because of the volume in here has seen that the powder bags have been pushed in until they just touch the breech of the gun, he orders the ram are retracted, the spanner tray folds back up like this, the breech of the gun is closed, and at that the gun is um, released so that it can elevate to whatever angle the fire control computer is telling it to go to. At that point, it is fired, and the primer shoots into that black powder charge in the last powder bag, which then sets off all six powder bags, destroying them entirely, and shoots the shell out. The final thing that happens to those powder bags is a burst of compressed air is shot through the gun to remove any burning embers that might be left over of the powder or the silk bags. At that point, the breach of the gun can be opened and the process can start all over again. Are there any other deep dives into the ship's systems you would like to see in the future? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. It gives us the free time to research complex processes like these. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.